Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered together today on the 11th of the seventh month on our Creator's calendar, which happens to be, oh, I can't see it, the 24th of September on the Gregorian calendar. Sorry about that. And we are going to be reading a few different sections, one from the Recognitions of Clement, one from the Book of Yobelim, and then right from Bereshit, chapter one, where we're going over the creation account. So thank you for your time, and we hope you all enjoy. The first one right here is from the Recognitions of Clement. All right. And this is the account of the creation. It says, in the beginning, when Yahuwah had made the Shemaim and the earth as one house, the shadow that was cast by the mundane bodies involved in darkness, those things that were enclosed in it. But when the will of Yahuwah had introduced light, that darkness that had been caused by the shadows of the bodies was straightway dispelled. Then at length, light is appointed for the day, darkness for the night. And now the water that was within the world, in the middle space of that first Shemaim <clears throat> and earth, congealed as if with frost, and solid as crystal, it distended in the middle spaces of the Shemaim and earth, are separated as by a firmament of this sort. And that firmament the Creator called Shemaim, so called by the name of that previously made. And so he divided into two portions that fabric of the creation, although it was but one house. Now you see, the Father always dwelt in unapproachable light. He, he, his dwelling is unchanging, it mentions in places. And he is in light inaccessible. So after he created the Shemaim and the earth, the, the mundane bodies or the substance of creation blocked the light. And that was what was, as you'll see when we read Genesis, that was what was causing the darkness to be yoked to the deep, but not everywhere. It says the reason of the division was this that the upper portion might afford a dwelling place to Melachim, or messengers, and the lower to men. After this, the place of the seas and the chaos that had been made received that portion of the water that remained below, by order of the ageless will, meaning by order of the Father. And these flowing down to the sunk and hollow places, the dry land appeared, and the gatherings of the waters were made seas. And after this, the earth which had appeared produced various species of herbs and shrubs. It gave forth fountains also, and rivers, not only in the plains, but on the mountains. And so all things were prepared, that men who were to dwell in it might have it in their power to use all these things according to their will, that is, either for good or evil. <clears throat> After this, he adorns that visible sky, or the firmament, with stars. He places in it also the sun and the moon, that the day might enjoy the light of the one, and the night that of the other, and that at the same time they might be for an indication of things past, present, and future. And if you're familiar with The Witness in the Stars by E.W. Bollinger, he actually goes through, and he's not the only one. There is a woman named Frances Roslin who wrote a book called The Maserot. I think she was the first in the 1800s, and she did quite a lot, a prolific amount of work looking up the etymologies and the meanings of the names of the stars from all over. This was a, what is originally given to Hanok in his book that we don't have anymore. But the meanings of the stars 
they declare him who names them and they show forth him who numbers them. You can see the Basora or the good news account in the names of the very things that are there. So it shows what is past, present, and future because it's the truth of what would be. You also see that in the very same way of the things that are or will be in the signs that they produce as made evident in the word, but as you can see explicitly in the Antichrist for Dummies videos or anti mashiach for Dummies videos on YouTube. They go into very explicit detail. They show when the signs that are foretold in Revelation actually happened in the sky and then the corresponding events that happen over and over and over again. So you can see that very phenomenon. All right. <clears throat> and if you pay attention, you can see it actually happening throughout scripture. There are certain things in the stars that you can see the events in different people's lives. It was reminiscent of like Dawid cutting off the head of Goliath. There, there's a constellation just like that, right? But it says, and after this, the earth, or we already read that one, huh? No. Yeah, sorry about that. It says, for they were made for signs of seasons and of days, which although they are seen indeed by all, are comprehended only by the learned and intelligent. And remember Gad the seer said that intelligence was stopped up until he did greatly in keeping favor. It was only the anointed, uh, the Mashiach of Elohim or Yahuwah, that was in, endowed with intelligence, the foretellers, the Kohanim, and the Melech, when they were walking correctly. And it says, and when after this he had ordered living creatures to be produced from the earth and the waters, he made paradise, which also he named a place of delights, Eden, right? It's where we get the, the Greek word of hedonism, right? Pleasures. Same comes from Eden. But after all these things, he made man on whose account he had prepared all things, whose internal species is older, meaning his immortal inner being, which was created on the first day, as we'll see in Yobelim shortly, and for whose sake all things that are were made, given up to his service and assigned to the uses of his habitation. And for anyone that read through Baruch yesterday during our fast, you would have seen that uh, everything was not just made for man, but everything, this world and the world to come, was made for his chosen, for his elect specifically. Everyone else is just enjoying the benefits of it while they're here. <clears throat> So now we have the account in Bereshit. This is chapter one. It says, In the beginning, Elohim created Eth, the Shemaim, and Eth, the earth. And the earth came to be, this, this is formless and empty. The Hebrew here is Tohu, Tohu, Wabohu, right? That Tohu, is that trackless wilderness, wandering wasteland, for, they say formless here, going astray, right? And when you add a, a mem at the end, tohum, that's the word for abysses, right? Just so you can see the connection there. But tohu wabohu is formless and empty. And darkness was on the face or the surface of the deep. And the Ruach of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let light come to be, and light came to be. And Elohim saw at the light, that it was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness. 
And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. <clears throat> and this is just a comment, because it was already light, right? It says, and then there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the first day. Literally, Yom Achad, or one, Yom One, right? Meaning that the evening light and the morning light are part of that day, okay? And Elohim said, let an expanse or firmament come to be in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it came to be so. And Elohim called the expanse or firmament Shemaim. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the second day. <clears throat> and Elohim said, Let the waters under the Shemaim be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it came to be so. And Elohim called the dry land earth, and the collection of the waters he called seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the plant that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it came to be so. And the earth brought forth grass, the plant that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the third day. And Elohim said, Let lights come to be in the firmament of the Shemaim to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times or seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the Shemaim to give light on the earth mm -hmm. and it came to be so and Elohim made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And Elohim set them in the expanse or firmament of the Shemaim to give light on the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good, and there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the fourth day. And Elohim said, Let the waters teem with shoals of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth on the face of the firmament of the Shemaim. And Elohim created great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters teemed according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. Um, one thing I'd like to point out real quick, I forgot to mention. In the Masoretic text, <clears throat> in the second day of creation, it they don't have that it is good, right? And again, because that's the only day where that seems to be missing, people will take that and they'll make, They'll make doctrines out of it. They'll have whole teachings and studies and a whole, they'll have a whole bunch of information about that. But if you look at the Septuagint version, it's it's included there. If you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, it was it was there. So it's just missing because of a typo. And all of those doctrines don't really matter much. But everything that Yahuwah created was good. Everything that he does was good in its season and its time. 
That's something that's expressly mentioned by Sirach ben Yahushua as well. But right here, I wanted to look. Yeah, so... Yeah, it doesn't mention here, but I'll have to add that from the Septuagint version. Or if you look at that yourself, you'll see it. And it actually should be included that it was good. All right, so to continue here. It says, and Elohim baruch them, or blessed them, saying, bear fruit and increase. Peru Oruvu, right in Hebrew. Peru, like Peru in South America, is literally to be fruitful in Hebrew. Brazil is iron, and those are where they did the most of their iron exports. It's still the number two iron export uh, place in the world today, and that's the Hebrew name for iron. So those were both discovered more than likely during the reign of Dawid and Shalomo when they were making their worldwide trips, right? It says, And Elohim Baruch or blessed them, saying, Bear fruit and increase and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there came to be evening and there came to be morning the fifth day. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth the living creature or creatures according to its kind, livestock and creeping creatures and beasts of the earth according to its kind. And it came to be so. <clears throat> and Elohim made the beast of the earth according to its kind, livestock according to its kind, and all that creep on the earth according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the Shemaim, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over all the creeping creatures that creep on the earth. And Elohim created the man in his image. In the image of Elohim, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So, I'd like to point out that it's his image and according to his likeness, but then you see that he's made in his image only. These things are explained throughout the, the scriptures. You have to find the meaning elsewhere, but to his image is what's given over time. And as you'll see in Yobelim, the whole creation account is a parable for his works through the 7,000 years to the millennial reign, right? Or the 6,000 years until the millennial reign. But it's the creation week. And in there, <clears throat> you, you have, while he made man at the beginning here, his likeness was not in him until later. And the likeness of our Elohim is in what we see, Yahuwah, Yahushua, when he came in the flesh. He is the likeness of the invisible Elohim, it says in Scripture, and we're to imitate him in his kindness and in his behavior. So that's when we are imitating him, we both have his image and his likeness. Right? And Irenaeus talks about that in detail. I believe it's also mentioned in the Apostolic Constitutions. And by in the recognitions of climate, somewhat, but not not overly much, I don't think. It says, an Elohim, Baruch, or blessed them, and Elohim said to them, Bear fruit and increase, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the Shemaim, and over all creatures moving on the earth. And Elohim said, See, I have given you every plant that yields a seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it is for food, 
and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the Shamayim, and to every creeping creature of the earth, or on the earth, in which there is life, every green plant is for food. And it came to be so. And Elohim saw all that he had made, and see, it was very good. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the sixth day. All right, and that was the end of what I had for Genesis or Bereshit there. And then this next section is what we have in Yobelim, which we'll get to again when we read that, but we'll go over it right now. Um, and then right here you see it said, I've heard, for your consideration, it's very interesting to see how this lines up with the Mishkan pattern, the Moed or the appointed times, the Aleph Bet, and history since creation. And again, you can also, and you should also line up the names of the patriarchs with this, which we, we've already sent out that email once before, but we'll find it and send it again for you guys to look at. All of that plays together to show in parable form everything he was going to do as the works, his works, until he rests with, with us, right? Which is what he says, our, my father labors until now and I labor, right? That was what he was talking about. Right here it says, Moshe is given the complete history from creation. <clears throat> And the Melech of the Presence spoke to Moshe. So the messenger of the Presence, which there's there's Melech, uh, there's messengers of the Presence, right? And then this one in particular is our Mashiach, the one speaking to Moshe here at the top of Mount Sinai is our Mashiach. And you'll see that through the course of just reading this if you pay attention to what is actually said. I mean, the entirety of the book of Yobelin. But again, like it mentions in the recognitions of Clement, Kepha says, as the substance of a body produces a shadow so much more, the fact that the Father is produced the Mashiach, right? And as he only says what he hears and he only does what he sees, it's like what you see, the shadow of a man <clears throat> so right here the father commands this messenger to write down for moshe these things and then this messenger commands for moshe to write these things down himself but he's doing it as well and that's when you have the two witnesses so just different things to keep in mind everything that he said from the beginning like two or more witnesses establish every matter is exactly why you have repeat stories and why things are redundant in all throughout the culture. So you can be assured of what's true. So anyways, it says, And the messenger of the presence spoke to Moshe according to the word of Yahuwah, saying, Write the complete history of the creation. How in six days, Yahuwah Almighty, or Yahuwah Elohim, finished all his works and all that he created, and kept Shabbat on the seventh yom and set it apart for all ages, and appointed it as a sign for all his works. For on the first day he created Aleph, the Shemaim which are above or the highest Shemaim, meaning the habitation of the immortal, like it mentioned in the recognitions there, right? And Bet, the earth, and Gimel, the waters, and Dalit, all the Ruachoth, which serve before him, the Melakim of the presence, and the Melakim of set apartness, and the Melakim of the, the spirit or Ruach of fire, and the Melakim of the spirit, the spirit, sorry, or the Ruach of the winds, 
and the Melakim of the Ruach of the clouds, and of darkness, and of snow, and of hail, and of hoarfrost, and the Melakim of the voices, and of the thunder, and of the lightning, and the Melakim, or messengers of the Ruach Oath, of the cold, and of heat, and of winter, and of spring, and of autumn, and of summer, and of all the Ruach Oath, or spirits, of his creatures, which are in the Shemaim, and on the earth. So literally also the inner beings of all the creatures that he would ever make. And this is why it says that his internal species is older. Because the souls, if you will, of every man was made right here on the first day. And that's why it says the children, the sons of Elohim, right here, and also mentioned in Yob, they sing for joy, right? <clears throat> But that the children of Elohim in the beginning did that, and they were they were known at that time who they'd be, I imagine. But it says, Hey, right, the next one that he created is the abysses and wa, the darkness, right? And Zion is the light, dawn, eve or the light, day, evening and dawn now we wouldn't have that in accurate i wouldn't know that if it wasn't for vanderkam's translation of the book of yobelim from the dead sea scrolls he actually puts darkness as in under wa and then the evening this is added as you can see but the evening is actually part of the light that was created because it's light day evening and morning and that's the fourfold aspect of the weapon, if you will, for the letter Zion. So that has to be corrected there. But again, it, it's in the book of Yob Elim in the Hebrew from the Dead Sea Scrolls, and you can find it in Vanderkam's translation. <clears throat> but it says, which he has prepared in the knowledge of his heart. And this is quoted in one of the Psalms from the Dead Sea Scrolls. And thereupon we saw his works and praised him, and lauded before him on account of all his works, for seven great works he did create on the first day. And on the second day he created faith. Remember, the faith is like a wall, a perimeter, or a container, right? Faith in scripture is literally the living creature as used during the time where the flood, the living creatures went into the ark. That's het yod tau, just like how the letters spelled. And that's the only use in scripture of it. But it says, and on the second day, he created heth, the firmament in the midst of the waters. And the waters were divided on that day. Half of them went up above and half of them went down below the firmament in the midst of, over the face of the whole earth. And this was the only work Yahuwah created on the second day. And on the third day, he commanded the waters to pass from off the face of the whole earth into one place, and the dry land to appear. And the waters did so as he commanded them, and they retired from off the face of the earth into one place outside of this firmament, and the dry land appeared. And on that day he created for them, Tet, all the seas according to their separate gathering places, and all the rivers, and the gatherings of the waters in the mountains and on all the earth, and all the lakes and all the dew of the earth. And Yod, the seed which is sown, and all sprouting things. Now, that's a key one when you keep in mind these parables, because he says the seed is the word. And that is the parable of parables. If you don't know the seed is the word, you're not going to get it. 
but once you that's the parable of parables and that helps tie all these things together because the seed is the word and the word that he gave his work in after here lines everything up perfectly but you have to think about these things and remember the seed or the word the yod is the work of his hand right okay and cough which as a prefix in front of a word it means to be like or to resemble to be as and cough as a suffix at the end of a word means you or yours so it's, it's for you or to resemble the fruit bearing tree and the tree of the wood which is like the cedars of lebanon the council of his community as it's mentioned right and then those that bear good fruits and this would have been after he gave his covenant, right? Or the work of his hand to cause them to grow. So different parables alluding to the works that he's doing in creation throughout history. But this would have been the time of judges, right? And then Lamed is the Garden of Eden in Eden and all. And you remember the garden is where perfection was. It's like the reign of Dawid and the end of Dawi's reign in Shalomos, where you had the foreshadow of the millennial reign. Okay. But also afterwards when sin entered in and they were taught by the goad stick of his uh, shepherd staff, if you will. These four great works Yahuwah created on the third day. And on the fourth day, he created Mem, the sun, and Noon, the moon, and Samik, the stars, and set them in the firmament of the Shamayim, to give light upon the earth, or upon all the earth, and to rule over the day and the night, and divide the light from the darkness. And Yahuwah appointed the sun, or Hashemish, Right, the is ha, and then shemesh is sun. That's also the word for the servant, because the shemesh branch, like right, the middle branch in the menorah, just like the word shemesh itself is the word for a servant or the studious servant that runs his course. He says, and he Yahuwah appointed the sun or Hashemish to be a great sign on the earth for days and for sabbaths or shabbats and for months and for feasts and for years and for sabbaths of years and for yobelim and for all seasons of the year and you find more detail about how the feasts are kept in the dead sea scrolls calendar information and then you find out how the Yobelim and the seasons were kept from all the way in the book of Hanok, where he talks about how it's appointed from the sun, which is the great light, and it has different aspects throughout each takufa or season uh, of three month periods, if you will. It only goes through the first two, I believe, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it might have a little bit more information, but a lot of that was missing. What we have with like the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs of the Book of Hanok, uh, it's an abridged version of the original at best. So, ob willing, we can have that restored to us before the end, but if not, he won't hold it against us, what we cannot know. But we have to keep in mind some of the stuff might be a little off, and when it is, you'll know why. As we go through Bereshit here, Genesis, you're going to see a lot of things that most people have no idea about, but we're going to be recording it everywhere anyway, so a lot of people will see it. There is intentional entire chunks just missing. You can see it most clearly in the narrative of the Exodus account with the plagues and whatnot, because you had a redundant repetition Yahuwah would tell Moshe to go do such and such a thing. Moshe would go do and say such and such a thing. And then the corresponding thing that Yahuwah told him to do because he was obedient happened. So then he would give him the whole list of what to do. And then Moshe would go do. And then it would happen. 
but that for whatever reason whether the author thought it was tedious or whatnot half of it's removed for each one of those sometimes it's what he was actually doing sometimes it was what y'all who had told him to do but you'll find as you go through that that half of the narrative's been removed to save space because it literally just repeats itself and you find this in the dead sea scrolls you find it in the samaritan version of the pentateuch in there's different witnesses that show that this is the original way it was written and once you see that pattern then things start to make more sense like Moshe is being punished for what he did with the children after striking the rock for the second time. It seems like a trivial thing, like a, a meaningless, trivial, like, ah, that's kind of rude. That's, ah, you know, whatever. How can that be so harsh of a punishment for him for, for such a simple thing? But you go back to the beginning there, all the way from when he first got him and started leading him out of Midian. It was humble obedience and the things that I told you will happen. And it's over and over again. He said to do it. He did what he was told it and it worked exactly like it was supposed to boom, 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 boom. And then finally he doesn't do what he's told. And it's like, ah, it's a huge deal. And you can see why it was such a stark. All right. You're not going into the promised land because of what you did, but otherwise you completely miss the significance of that when you don't have this part of the story fully fleshed in. And when we read it, you'll see. I'll also share the piece. Much is given, much is expected. Exactly. Uh, the other, the children weren't held to such a high standard because they weren't, they weren't brought near to Yahuwah himself. They didn't speak face to face with our Mashiach like that. Exactly. All right. And then we'll continue right here. <clears throat> And it, meaning the, the sun, divides the light from the darkness and for posterity, or prosperity, rather, that all things may prosper which shoot and grow on the earth. These three kinds he made on the fourth day. Now, you find out in different places, but Josephus talks about it. The recognitions talk about it. Here you see it alluded to. And then you can see it in, in our Mashiach and what he walked out. But the light of the sun is what the Father has empowered to nurture creation. And the light from the sun is what empowers the moon and the stars. And from there, all the influences of those lights come down on creation to benefit us for our nourishment and growth. Both the, the warmth from the sun and the coolness from the moon in their contrast, it's all part of that of that phenomenon you see it in our creator in our mashiach where he says that all authority was given to him and once he was the one in whom all authority was given he breathed on or empowered his 12 and then the 72 in which they were nourishing and feeding the assemblies as the lights of the world so it's the same picture and it's the truth playing out in every context, but that should help people with how creation actually functions, right? You just have to tie it in with what he said, because that is reality. The chapter 11, or sorry, verse 11, it says, And on the fifth day he created Ion, great sea monsters in the depths of the waters. For these were the first things of flesh that were created by his hands. So the, the first flesh creatures, but the last beast kingdoms, the spiritual kingdoms, if you will, right? And that would have been behemoth or Leviathan and behemoth, as it's mentioned in Second Baruch, in Hanok, and a few other places, including Genesis. It says, and for, for these were the first things created by his hands. Pay, which is like the open mouth, is the fish and everything that moves in the waters. And Zaudi is everything that flies, the birds, and all their kind. And the sun rose above them to prosper them, 
and above everything that was on the earth, everything that shoots out of the earth, and all fruit-bearing trees, and all flesh. These three kinds he created on the fifth day. And on the sixth day he created all, kuf, the animals of the earth, and resh, all cattle, and sheen, everything that moves on the earth, or the creeping creatures. And after all this, he created Tao, man. A man and a woman created he them, and gave him dominion over all that is upon the earth, and in the seas, and over everything that flies, and over beasts, and over cattle, and over everything that moves on the earth and over the whole earth, and over all this he gave him dominion, meaning man. Which is why the head of every man is Mashiach, right? But there's nothing else over you, because man was given dominion over all of creation, including the Ruach Oath made on the, on the first day there although that wasn't taught right away, as also explained by Irenaeus, or Irenaeus as they call him. It was in the course of time where our Mashiach told us that we had power over Ruach Oath, right? And to cast out demons and whatnot. And these four kinds he created on the sixth day. And there were altogether twenty or two and twenty kinds. And he finished all his work on the sixth day, all that is in the Shemaim and on the earth and in the seas and in the abysses and in the light and in the darkness and in everything. And he gave us a gray sign, the Shabbat day, that we should work six days but keep Shabbat on the seventh day from all work. And all the messengers of the presence and all the messengers of set apartness, these two great classes, he has bidden us to keep the Shabbat with him in the Shemaim and on earth. And he said to us, Behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples, and these shall keep the Shabbat Yom. And I will set them apart unto myself as my people, and will Barak or Baruch them. Now, we'll get into more detail, but the Sabbath there, the, the Shabbat day that we're supposed to set apart is the weekly Shabbat, which is the most important, the foreshadow of the millennial reign, as we've been talking about there. But also there's, there's appointed times where there's certain Sabbaths. You got to keep those two. And they're mentioned explicitly. No one's left in the dark about what he says is a Shabbat that you don't work in. It's right there in Yikra or Leviticus chapter 23. Right? He says, And behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples, and these shall keep the Shabbat day. And I will set them apart unto myself as my people, and will Baruch them, or bless them, as I have Kadosh the Shabbat Yom, and do Kadosh it unto myself. Even so, I will Baruch, or bless them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim. And I have chosen the seed of Yaakov. The... Um, The word Akob, right, is the word for heel, or they will translate that sometimes as surplanter. But Yaakob is literally, he will, what happens at your heel, literally to be recompensed at the end or immediately for what you're doing. There's three types of reward that are mentioned in scripture that I'm familiar with. Akob is the most immediate, it's coming at the hill of what you're doing, and that is explained by Kepha as those who are doing good or unintentional, non-malicious sinners. 
if you're not compelled by necessity and if you're not malicious in your doing you're going to be corrected more immediately for the things you're doing and that is both for what you do good and what you do bad uh, that is akob the other word you have is gamal like gimel which is the camel what goes out with your goods and then will come back with your reward after a journey or if you look at it in the creation account picture it's like water you you drop a drop of water and the ripples will go out in every direction then they'll they'll eventually come back it's not immediate but it does happen and then that word gamal in hebrew is literally to wean a child and that lines up with the third work the waters to wean the child when cain was brought up adam got the reward of what he did to his father as his son doing it to him just like in the same way where Aharon was anointed, Adam was anointed, and it reflects in his life with his children how he is to his father above. When his two sons were consumed by the fire, when they brought strange worship before the creator, and he had helped participate in the death of his, the father's two sons with the golden calf and the, and the idolatry, the inequity, because they knew they had made the covenant and they went and broke it, right? So that's the Gamal one. And then you have Shalom or Shalam, which is like completeness, fullness, and peace. And that is the uh, great Shalom. That's the reward, the Shalom that is given from the Father in certain situations. But those are the different words, and you have to look at when they're used and how they're used throughout Scripture to get the intent with what kind is being spoken of. But it says, and I have chosen the seed of Yaakov, so the one who's not a malicious sinner, right, that has what he's done, doing coming at the heel of his action, from amongst all that I have seen and have written him down as my firstborn son. And have set him apart unto myself, Leolam Wa'ed, forever and ever, or for ages and witnessed. And I will teach them the Shabbat day, that they may keep Shabbat thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should keep Shabbat with us on the seventh day, to eat and to drink, and to Baruch him who has created all things, as he has Baruch and Kadosh unto himself, a peculiar people above all peoples, that they should keep Shabbat together with us. And he caused his commands to ascend as a sweet savor, acceptable before him all the days. That's why he said that obedience is better than sacrifice, right? It's like a pleasant aroma in his nostrils. There were 22 heads of mankind from Adam to Yaakov, and 22 kinds of work were made until the seventh day. This is Baruch and Kadosh, and the former is also Baruch and Kadosh, and this one serves with that one for set-apartness and Baraka. This is why you can join them together, every one of these works here. And then you also can line it up with the patriarch that it, it is in line with. For example, the letter Yod, the third day, right, is the tenth letter. The tenth patriarch from Adam is Noach, Noach, which is comforted or rest. And when he gave his covenant, when he gave his promises to Abraham, the word given to Abraham, the promises to him, right, in Yitzhak, and then the covenant to Yaakov, right? It culminated in the, the covenant, the giving of the, the Torah to the 12 tribes with Moshe. That was the fulfilling or the fullness of the Yod there in history. But it all ties together that way, right? And then you can see that was his comfort, 
or that was their ability to rest when they had the Shabbat and his word. Because there's no rest for the wicked, right? That's a theme throughout scripture. But So the, the point is you can take each of the patriarchs, you can line it up with the creation that was done at that day, and the meaning of their name also goes along with it. It's very interesting to look at, including where Yaakov lines up with the last work, right? Yaakov slash Yisrael, the one who has what he's coming at the hill of what he's doing, and also the one who strives with man and Elohim and has overcome, or the prince of El, if you will. It says, and to this Yaakov and his seed, it was granted that they should always be the Baruch and Kadosh ones of the first testimony in Torah. But that part, Yaakov and his seed, is added, right? But it says into this, meaning from Adam to Yaakov. They were always part of the Baruch and Kadosh ones of the first testimony. And that is also explained in the Shepherd of Hermas when you have the perfect ten stones that were brought up from um, Adam to Noach. And it mentions that if they had not walked in the same Ruach without deviation, if they had meant any over sin, they would not have been fit for the building of the tower. They would have not been a witness to him of the truth in how they behaved. So th there's a, a thing there that ties in as well. But it says, and to this, it was granted that they should always be the Baruch and Kadosh ones of the first testimony and Torah. Even as he had set apart and Baruch the Shabbat day on the seventh day, he created the Shemaim and Eretz, or the Shemaim and earth, and everything that he created in six days. And Yahuwah made the seventh day Kadosh for all his works. Therefore, he commanded on its behalf that Whoever does any work thereon shall die, and that he who defiles it shall surely die. Wherefore do you command the children of Israel to observe this day that they may keep it set apart, and not do thereon any work, and not to defile it, as it is more kadosh than all other days." Right, because the, the weekly Shabbat is reminiscent of the millennial reign. It's the most important set-apart day that he has, which is why it's the most prevalent every week, right? And whoever profanes it shall surely die, and whoever does thereon any work shall surely die eternally, that the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generations and not be rooted out of the land. For it is a Kadosh day and a Baruch day. And everyone who observes it and keeps Shabbat thereon from all his work will be Kadosh and Baruch throughout all days, like unto us. Declare and say to the children of Israel the Torah of this day, both that they should keep Shabbat thereon and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts that it is not lawful to do any work thereon which is unseemly, to do thereon their own pleasure, and that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk, and to draw water or bring in or take out thereon through their gates any burden, which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwellings. Meaning you don't you don't go pulling stuff out to move things to your storage or do things like that. But if you happen to have made your lunch and prepared a picnic, you can take your basket out to go sit on the grass within a, a Sabbath day's journey, and you're not going to be uh, you're not going to be held accountable as as sinning, right? Our Mashiach told a man to take up his his bed. It wasn't a, a, It wasn't something that he didn't have beforehand. It was what he carried with him in his dwelling before. It was what he was on, and it wasn't considered a sin for him, right? So just to keep things in mind there, these things are not made to 
look to trip people up and try to condemn everyone. But the idea is you don't work. There's no labor. Water used to have to be draw, drug up from a well where you'd lower a pail with a rope. You'd get the water and you'd pull it back up or you'd have to use the, the wheel and the rope, right? But either way, it's labor. It was effort. And that's what that's what they're talking about, right? You don't do that stuff on Shabbat. You prepare these things beforehand. Right. It says, it says, declare and say to the children of Israel, the Torah of this day, both that they should keep Shabbat thereon and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts, that it is not lawful to do any work thereon, which is unseemly to do thereon their own pleasure. And that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk and to draw water or to bring in or take out thereon through their gates any burden which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwellings and they shall not bring in or take out from house to house on that day for that day is more set apart in baruch than any yobel day of the yobelim on this we keep shabbat or we kept shabbat in the shemaim before it was made known to any flesh to keep Shabbat thereon on the earth. And the creator of all things Baruch it, but he did not set apart all peoples and nations to keep Shabbat thereon, but Yisrael alone. Them alone he permitted to eat and drink and to keep Shabbat thereon on the earth. And this is a, a self-evident fact. A lot of people will be contentious about this and get upset but you can look throughout the common scriptures and you don't see him established with any man until he gives it to the children of Yaakov to keep the Shabbat but you have the unwritten Torah that was kept beforehand in Abraham Yitzhak and Yaakov and their children before that time they kept the Sabbath they kept the Shemitah they kept the festivals that they had instituted which we'll learn as we go through Yobelim but it was in the course of their history. And who had it established when? It all points out to the different parts of foretelling different things that were happening at those times as well. So we'll see it as we go. It says, and the creator of all Baruch it, but he did not. No, we already read that one. One more thing I'd like to point out is it is not the literal blood children of Yisrael alone that are permitted, but the commonwealth, right? Those that are grafted in as, as the renewed covenant allows, okay? These things, we have to be intelligent about them and not, and not just uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater when we hear things, right? But he says, but Yisrael alone, them alone, he permitted to eat and drink and to keep Shabbat thereon on the earth. And the creator of all things, Baruch, this day which he had created for Baraka and making it Kadosh and splendid above all days. This Torah and testimony was given to the children of Yisrael as a Torah forever unto their generations. And this is why it mentions, although it, the text is a little off sometimes, but it says, Yahuwah is master, our, our Mashiach is master of the Shabbat, right? And they call that uh, Yahuwah's day, if you will, but they translate that as a title. And they, they wrongly attribute that to the first day of the week. But that's the, the promise of the resurrection. And it is the foreshadow of the millennial reign so thank you all for that and we'll continue back with bear sheet next week so thank you let me pause real quick and then we'll see if we have any questions